Hey guys, this is Alyssa Health Harry, and today I'm joined by a very special guest um, in the UK, Dr. Ellen, love coach. And you help people um, talking about um, dynamics and polarity in relationships, which is a topic a lot of us find fascinating. So thank you for joining us, Ellen. We know each other a bit on Facebook and we talked about some other stuff, but that's your mastery. So I'm here to speak to you a little bit about it. Yes, cool. I'm really happy to be here. I feel excited. Yeah. So how did you get into all that stuff with, um, I mean, it's a topic that's relevant to pretty much anyone, right? And that's even if you're not in a relationship. Mm. Um, so how did you get into this stuff? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I guess I got into it through my own personal life, my own personal journey. I think I must have, I reached a stage in my own life. I was a single mom with two boys and I just had like this trail of, you know, um, failed relationships and heartbreak and heartache. And I kind of got to this point, I guess you could call it a dark night of the soul, where I had like another failed relationship. And I was like, you know, that kind of thing, if you're like on the kitchen floor, kind of crying, like, what is wrong with me? And I was like, I know that I'm attractive. I know that I'm intelligent. I know that I've got a good heart. Like I've been told I'm a catch. So like, what is going on here? Like, I just could not work it out. And so my nature is very much to be the seeker, you know, to try to discover hidden truths, like across the kind of spectrum of everything I'm kind of like a truth seeker but it was very much to do with what is going on with me so I went on a real deep inner journey an inner quest and I got a lot of answers you know I received a lot of answers I went on a journey to discover everything I could about relationships about love about romance um you know whether it was books web you know podcasts some webinars um i ended up you know taking courses working with it with coaches um just training and absorbing everything that i possibly could on the on the subject you know to work out like what was going on with me and i noticed a lot of similarities in what was happening with me mm. in my personal love life and a lot of my friends were experiencing the same thing I was like had a bunch of friends who were also single moms and you know we gravitated towards each other because we had common you know we had a common kind of a life experience and then I had other people that I knew who were like happily married and like maybe had been married for a long time or were really settled in their relationships and I was like oh my gosh like what's the difference here you know what what's going on with me my friends and what's going on with these other women or people who seem to be able to do it you know and so yeah that that's a bit of the background of, of how I kind of got into this cool this area. that's mm -hmm. fascinating so yeah I do relate to the dark light so um definitely I know guys that have been I mean same for women right but guys that have been hurt they've fallen in love and they thought it was the one and then of course that's woken them got to send them on this journey and spiraled them in and in a way to be honest with me I mean well I mean I was bad with girls at school and weird and so the fact that I was attracted to go to women, obviously, and not good with them bothered me and sort of is the way, roundabout way of how I find the communities I'm in now. So I'm always interested in the subject, of course, becoming divine masculine. Um, yes. Yeah. It applies to everything. And, and it's almost like, I'd say, society set up, I don't know how you feel, like to be those, that polarity that I want to talk to you about is like, it's sort of gone. Um, it, it's sorry. Let me rephrase. The system set up for it to deflate and for it not to be there. Now we have to go on this journey to find out and learn about how to do it. Almost like reading a book or practicing it, because it's almost been kicked out of our nature. What we're supposed yes. to be, we naturally do. Like yes, yes, it really has. You know, and it's like it's like so much in our modern society. Um there's like an inversion, you know, things are upside down, things are back to front. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, when I talk about this, it can be provocative, it can be triggering for some people, of course, because a lot of what I've come to understand is that, you know, women are becoming more and more masculinized and women and men have been becoming more and more feminized, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
and I'm I'm talking heteronormative here. You know, it can it can go into other kinds of um, areas, but that's kind of like a different conversation and, and not my area of, of expertise or personal experience. So I'm kind of talking he hetero heterosexual relationships here, mm -hmm. um, and and so like. Of course, we all look my eyes, a young girl growing up, like almost from, you know, birth. Girls are nowadays taught you can do anything. You're as good as men. You know, you can do you can you, you know, you can do it all right. You can you can and you should do it all. Not just that you can do it all, but you should do it all. So like I was very quick to jump into being a single mom. I was very quick to be like, I don't actually need a man. I was very quick to like kick people, you know, kick people to the guys to the curb who weren't kind of shaping up for me. Um, and I was like, I can do it all, right? And, and I should do it all. Um, and then of course, with the whole feminist movement, it's not to deny the fact that there has been oppression, suppression of women. Oh my gosh, femicide, you know, you name it, it's happened. Mm. But, and unfortunately, you know, the, with the feminist movement, it's been like, in my experience and what I've observed is it just hasn't really done women that many favors in terms of their relationships with men, their romantic relationships, especially. And men, on the on on the sort of other hand, are, you know, it's been so celebrated that men should do what women do as well. Whether you know, be more hands on with the children, you know, changing nappies, um, feeding the babies, um, all of the things that were just supposed to be women's job. You know, doing the dishes, doing housework, cooking, and you know, that is a beautiful development as well. Of course, you know, because we're not talking about trying to return to some form of oppressive mm. 1950s it's always kind of the, the 1950s sort of stereotype um but the 1950s stereotype actually did have a lot of positive attributes and it's yeah. kind of been vilified in a way yeah. you know but it's it's trying to find our balance but it's trying to get our balance back and that's why the you know the word polarity is is such a useful word mm. because opposites attract there's yin and yang and and there's there's night night and day you know there's different um attributes that the masculine and the feminine have and the problem is is that when women are becoming more and more masculinized and men are becoming more and more feminized we're kind of either canceling each other out in our romantic relationships where we're becoming just like quite neutralized with each other and there's no passion there's no spark yeah. there's no chemistry yeah. we're like roommates not lovers you know and or um if a woman is becoming is is quite in her masculine and you've got a man who's also you know his masculine energy is quite online he may not be fully embodied in a healthy dominant masculine energy because he hasn't done the work it hasn't been modeled to him it's not you know he doesn't know how to do it so then you've got a masculine woman and you, actually what you have is a wounded masculine woman when I say wounded as in you know coming through her um showing up through her wounding and her traumas and then you've got a wounded masculine man who's also showing up through his wounding and his traumas and that just is a complete nightmare it's arguments it's fights it's volatility it's two you know hor locking horns it's just it's just and that was you know my experience personally I discovered that I was very aggressive in my masculine energy mm. with my husband um and I was just fighting fighting all the time like I wouldn't let him I always had to be right you know I I was always having to be right about everything and I was emasculating him so much and then I was resentful because he was not a strong masculine man mm. and that's what you'll find is what women do is that they're unconsciously mm. um ma emasculating their man their man and then Labor they're love. contemptuous of him you mm. know so he can't win like no. you know you know so it's um yeah it's it's quite a trip <laughs> it's crazy what you said yeah so I mean this is a really interesting topic we're going deep with it I mean like you said you can trigger a few people but the the thing is like we're in a community yeah, and I understand and I'm sure you agree that underneath it all we are all one so there is no sex right but the thing is we come in these bodies in a 3d reality and I as a guy am not the same as you as a lady like I have more testosterone in my body four mm -hmm. times more than you you have more estrogen this means that 
not only do bodily and hormonally we're going to act differently for, via this, but actually how we think and how we feel. And yeah, I understand like emotionally we all have healing and our traumas. But I mean, for example, women have sexual trauma. That's completely different to a guy's manifestations of what traumas we've got. Like we live in worlds where we think and feel differently. And that's key. And I actually feel, um, Ellen, that this is a school of learning, of growth. Like we obviously are one and unconditional love underneath all. But in this school, in this body, our healing is through us. But also our healing is also through our opposites. The, our opposites have things and ways of seeing the world the feminine to me as a way of seeing the world that is part of my healing which I have inside me that I need to heal so I think basically what I'm telling you is like friendships with the opposite sex and especially actually relationships like it's really important for your healing on many yeah. ways um so if this polarity thing isn't practiced and fixed me becoming more divine in my masculinity then um, because I know for me I came from wounded I was overly feminine so okay. I wouldn't even do the guy thing of like, I know loads of my best friends and friends in this community that are very aggressive as guys, but I would, through my family and stuff, I'd be, I would cry. So I guess yeah. you look at me, I mean, that's my natural response. I wouldn't beat anyone up or get aggressive. I just cry. So I was, over, I was one of those overly feminine, um, you know, guys, and I need to, and I still need to practice my true divine masculinity. Like, yes. How, yeah. how do you see divine if you had to say what is divine masculine, what are the attributes of, because I know we all have both inside us, but what is the true divine masculine attribute and what's the the, the predominant um for predominant things of a divine feminine? What's the differences? Yeah. So it's really, oh, everything that you said is so fascinating to me. Like, um, and and what's coming up for me is is this kind of, we've got to be really careful because what has happened with the divine masculine with men is that we've all, they've also been slightly, our, their journey has been slightly hijacked by new age spirituality as well. Because a lot of men um, have gone on this divine masculine journey and have kind of, they're, they're, they're like channeling the divine masculine if you want to say but they're become but it's still very feminine you know it's very much like you know let's let's do your tantra and meditate and be very floaty and you know yes. and then that's fine that's good but it still is the masculine energy is not online there and they're still potentially um in some form of unconscious emasculation internally and also in their dynamic with their female um counterpart um but like what i would what i would describe as the divine masculine or a term that i sort of prefer at the moment that i'm using is a is a healthy dominant man it's healthy dominance hmm. so dominant dominant dominance is not the same as domineering right they're similar words but dominant man, it means he is the man, he is, he is, it's his leadership qualities, right? He is a leader. And, you know, I would even, I think I said this to you when we were, we were talking offline the other day, um, you know, what it what is the threat what is the threat to the government, right? Or to those in power and control? It's, a lot of healthy dominant men leaders right men who will stand up and they will take charge and they will say no like that's not right I'm not doing that my family's not doing that you know it's this healthy dominance and he's a leader and you know there are a lot of attributes that go along with this where and to, to put it very simple very simplistically the masculine is the thinker doer action taker he's mm. linear he's forward thinking he's a visionary right he has a vision he's mm. like this is my vision for he has his own purpose so has a vision for his purpose in life and that can be his passion you know what he wants to do in the world what he wants to create in the world his purpose and then he also has a vision for his relationship he's a vision for his lifestyle for his marriage for his, you know, the dynamic that he, that he has, whether it's like where he wants to live, how many children, um, what their what way, you know, things are going to look on the day to day, and he even has so he's a vision in the macro and he's a vision in the micro as well. So yeah. he will even have a vision for how the day looks, how his day to day life looks, and what his day to day life looks with his woman, with his family, and the woman, the on the his, the feminine counterpart 
she is much more to do with the feeling, right? So the dominant masculine man, he is very devotional. This is a really key point. He is full of love and devotion. So he's not a domineering control freak, right? He is like, he takes, he almost, while he's the leader, he takes a lot of his um, decision-making process based on how his woman is feeling he always takes her feelings into consideration and something that my husband and I have you know been we've been working on this we've been developing this together for you know the entirety of our marriage but it's becoming you know the polar polarity is still very much you know coming online you know we're still really feeling into this working into this and a big shift in our relationship has been that my husband will now ask me instead of, he used to say to me what are you thinking all the time he say what are you thinking yeah. you know because I'd be like staring off into space or he would see a worried look on my face or he would be like what are you thinking mm. and now he asks me how are you feeling like what are you feeling Oh, nice. And it is yeah. like a completely different, it's a difference between night and day. Because if he says to me, what are you thinking? I'm literally like, I'm thinking about a million different things. I'm thinking like, who knows what I'm thinking about? It's like, mm. it's like I've got about a gazillion tabs open on my browser, right? Mm. But when he, and then if I tell him what I'm thinking, quite often it might get into like dispute. We could get into like a, a sort of a gnarly thing. For him. Yeah. Yeah, because he's like, how am I going to fix all these things? Like, she's thinking of what I'm, well, then he'll start to try to say, well, this is what, you know. But yeah, when and almost like he's trying to, he's falling, he's basically saying, here's your reality. I submit to your reality, the divine masculine reality. It's, yes, it's the really yes. the wrong way of, because I, I can relate to that. I can relate yeah. to that so bad. Like, I used to do yeah. that with girls, even friends. I used to say that. Like, yeah, I used to say that. <laughs> what are you thinking? Like, but now it should be like, hey you know how are you feeling so I can take care of you and what I think is important as a man like because I can vision yeah. us somewhere <laughs> like, oh, totally. so so and and you know so what are you feeling so I'd be able to respond to my husband by saying I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling worry or I'm feeling fear or I'm feeling you know tired and and so uh, but from my perspective as a woman on this journey for me it's just been like this constant not continuous journey of de-armoring de-armoring and that can be like physically sexually as you said sexual like most women even if they haven't um experienced like a actual sexual abusive relation you know assault or abuse mm. they're still quite armored you know there's sexual de-armoring and then there's just holistic de-armoring because mm. we have and, and you know like as little girls we've just been we have to be so tough you know, and, and it's this whole, I'm a badass, independent boss, babe, you know, and spice it's just girls. kind of... I blame the Spice Girls. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, and of course, there's such, it's so captivating and it's so alluring because it does make you feel empowered and strong. And, but it actually, what we are losing from that as women is our beautiful vulnerability. Yeah. And the vulnerability is there to be cherished and yeah. protected by the masculine, that's what he's there for. And, and like, you know, it can get even like there are still concepts coming up for me around this polarity that I'm actually having to be like, oh, wow. Like it goes even further where recently I've been discovering and learning that actually the feminine, like a little girl, really should be covered by the masculine for her whole life, Interesting. covered by him from yeah. father to husband almost you know and women being out in the world trying to and this is hugely triggering for the fat for feminist movement of course you know and I'm not trying to um definitely not trying to um force this on anybody like I'm always like if you don't resonate that's fine you know but, yeah. but this is this is my my understanding of it and the masculine provision um I mean, I'm just looking around me now at my father, at my husband, at my brother, at my sons. I have three sons. Mm -hmm. And so those pol I, I am I am looking at the polarity of all those relationships and mm -hmm. looking at the amazing provision that I receive that I am because I'm re I receive this provision from my father, from my husband, now from my sons, you know, even mm -hmm. my my, you know, I, I know women who are polarizing their relationship with their young sons who are like five six seven years old you know mm -hmm. um 
and it's it's complete game changer um it, it changes everything it changes mm. everything yeah it's mad um it's a really mad topic so so i'll just like to say quickly what i think because i resonate so much with what you said and this might be triggering to people as well and it's what i read because i read a lot of david dada and the book the way of superior man and i've actually resonated with it of how i've lived my life and how i'm practicing things so i feel like divine masculine to me is like he learns to know what he wants he knows what he know what he is he looks at himself honestly authentically and raw he involves self-relationship he always goes first to draw out the qualities that he seeks like for example if my partner's not being vulnerable i'll go first and show it's okay and be vulnerable and then we can work with that um um, for the, he, a divine masculine finds his purpose works towards that and never puts the pressure of making this might be controversial people his partner i believe shouldn't be his entire first priority in his whole world his stability and grounding should come from a higher purpose aka yeah. what did you really come here to do you really came here to help a load of people by healing yourself and then if someone wants to join you a divine feminine in that then they they can support you and you give them the container by focusing on your purpose and of course that does mean nurturing a relationship too you just never make the relationship your primary purpose because yes. that also will lose the polarity in her side and she'll blame you um, ironically in the attraction and the polarity will be lost and that's totally. what grounds you um yeah. so yeah it doesn't mean you don't work on the relationship but you always find a higher purpose and you work towards that and that's what keeps the polarity going it's well really that's important. the yeah and that's that's the man that those are the two that is the man in his in his purpose on his purpose it is him work working on his purpose and you know when i i totally agree with everything that you just said and um i've also read that book actually it's it's fantastic um yeah. I bought it for my brother as well um <laughs> and you know i i i always wondered why as a woman like what i would find most when i would fancy my man right when I would find him the most attractive mm. is when he's doing something that has got nothing to do with me Hi. so yeah. it's when he's on his purpose so yeah. like it could be you know when he when he's like um you know like you know I have a different partners and different and different with different jobs right with different roles so I had one you know ex who would been like you know working with a chainsaw or something like and doing something with a tree you know something like that like and I'd be like that would be really attractive to me or it could be just when he's doing you know fixing something he's um even like my husband now you know he works in computers and things but like when he's really focused on something working on something and you know then it's like oh he's oh you know I quite fancy him like you know but it's when he's not He's doing something that is not funny. Focus. Isn't that like with the firemen, um, the fantasy of women with firemen and policemen? They're doing something yeah. that's helping. You know what I mean? I just thought of that now. Exactly. Yeah. That is so true. And that is that is true across the border. Like it's the same with yeah, anything that a man, like a drummer or a musician or an artist, or like yeah. it can be anything that a man, it doesn't have to be one of those kind of high danger. But no. that is why, but that is why those those are seen as being so like sexy. It's because they are like extremely polarized that's yeah. like an extremely polarized version of a of a healthy dominant man like yeah. he's literally fighting fires for you he's yeah. literally out there saving lives and fighting fires and you know that's why that is so alluring and compelling mm. um but the trick is as you know in your own relationship is to as a woman certainly speaking from a woman's perspective is to look at the ways that your man is doing that for you how is he fighting fires for you like what provision is he already mm. giving you because when we first embark on this journey as a woman and we learn all about this polarity sometimes our partner's not learning about it. it's beautiful if you're both learning about it at the same time mm. but sometimes you know what's one of us that's doing the work on our own because our partner's just not on that journey yet and so I always say to the women that I'm working with, you know, it's trying to find the ways that your man is already doing these things. He's already in his polarity in different ways. He's already in a dominant. Where is he? Where is he in his healthy dominance? Where is he leading you in the relationship? Where is he offering you provision? You know, and provision can come in so many different forms. It's not people often think it's financial and material. And that is a part of big part of it. Mm -hmm. But um, it can be in so many other ways as well. Like a man offers you provision with his time, with his with his you know care, with his listening to you, with his um, you know anything that anything at all that he gives you, you know, 
is his provision for you. So it's always a matter for me with the women that I'm working with is trying to um, help them see where he's already doing that, where he's already being like that. And then, you know, encouraging that, you know, because what we focus on grows, what we focus on expands. And then how the woman can be come more and more in her feminine expression is going to massively inspire his masculine expression to come online. Yeah, wow. yeah, that's such a good point. And, and I'll definitely say for me, um, coming from, yeah, really messy and, and um, non-polarizing masculine, I think learning to lead too is really important. So I've only had two relationships and last summer, and I'm 35, but I'm grateful and it came at the right divine time. But I love relationships for many reasons. And one of them is I like to practice leading. And that doesn't mean just online. It means in the real world. And what better way to learn to lead for me than someone that trusts and loves me? So I, I remember being in those relationships. And basically in my head, I don't know whether this is right or wrong. I was like, so I'm responsible here for my partner's entertainment, keeping her mentally stimulated, satisfied. Um, yeah, I just took it as a responsibility, like you'd have a, a, like a kid, it's your responsibility yeah. and you want to, because you love them, you want to do all these things. And I think that's right for divine masculines to do. And I know it's trivialing for women because we're basically saying, I'm basically saying a man should lead. I also yeah. think a man should know what he wants and he should go for what he wants. And in the world of dating, that means like, if you like a girl, you've got a, because again, this is, this is one of my issues too. Like, and I know other guys can relate at some point, like you like girls, but I mean, if you don't tell them you like them, if you don't lead, if, you do, if you're not honest, if you're not rawly honest, how can you move things forward? If you don't go for what you want, obviously yeah. you guys take that. Uh, what I'd say undivine is the extreme form of that is dark is like rape and all that stuff. Now that's not, I mean, in the, that is yeah. going for what you want, but that's uncalibrated and fucked up. But I mean, yeah. going for what you want as in, if you like a girl, you know, make the moves, like, yeah. you know, and then yes. let the chips fall where they may. And if they don't like you, cool. Like all of these things is things that I like to practice, like going for what I want and leading is like really key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really agree. And and I think in the dating world, you know, women who are both both men and women who are, you know, understanding, learning about polarity, like the dating world is such a minefield because, you know, men are finding it frustrating because they find that the women are trying to take the lead all the time. You know, that they're, they're coming across a lot of masculine women who are taking the lead. And then women who are working on polarity are coming across a lot of men who want the women to take the lead. You know, they're like, asking the woman to make the decisions like where will we go you know where do you want to eat what do you want to do um when will I call you when you know the man is the men are constantly putting the decisions back on the woman yeah. whereas a dominant masculine man and his health healthy a healthy polarized masculine man will say um I'll pick you up at 6 30 on Wednesday evening does that exactly. work for you yeah you know what I mean put yeah. on a nice dress put on a nice dress I'm going to take you somewhere you know does this work or, or he might say would you find would you like Italian food or Chinese food you know what I mean they might you know there will be he will want to and it's all a matter of you know with because a woman that will oh my god the relief when a man takes all these decisions off well, your I, hands yeah it's such a relief but it has to be done in a way that is of course healthy calibrated and caring, calibrated and caring. Yeah, yeah exactly you know um so um you know I will I will I will I will ask my husband now things like I will say things to him like may may, may I please have a directive about something because you know the masculine gives directives and, cor yeah. and correctives and he'll say to his woman you know stop that you're being disrespectful right now mm -hmm. or he'll say you know um he will give her directives but my husband of course is very concerned with well I don't want to be like an asshole about this <laughs> do you know what I mean what you want me to tell you what to do I'm like no but yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you give me like, may I please have a directive about something means that it's going to give me a lot of relief for you to actually tell me what to do in this situation. It implies and he knows what he wants. It could and even be like, yeah. It could even be like in things like housework, you know, mm. um, 
you know, and working out the dynamic between, you know, so for example, I'm at home most of the time. I work from home. My husband works out of the house. You know, then I, I look after the kids when they're home from school. And we had a really helpful re um, discussion recently where I was like, well, what are your expectations of me in the home when you're not here? Yeah. And he was able to say to me, well, I'd like you to put the dishwasher on at least once a day. I'd like you to do a laundry load at least once a day. I'd like you, you know, and, and it was like, wow, it was so, it was so relieving for me not to have to go oh right that makes sense sure I can do that and it also means that you know if he was to say something to me which I was like oh well you know I'd say may I share my feelings about that like if I, I thought it was I for whatever reason what he was saying didn't resonate or it felt bad in my body or I felt like you know then we can talk through that you know but yeah it's like a whole new way of being together I like and it yeah, so, this is amazing. So could you give any tips for um, let, let's focus on the women aspect. So how can um, well, first of all, the divine feminine, does that is that like because I'm learning about I can only speak for the masculine side and I'm learning more about the feminine side as I interact with them more like the divine feminine, I guess, is more they need that container is is more like presence, I guess, tapping into the power of that and letting go. There's an aspect to it of letting go that I found fascinating and not controlling like that's huge. That's massive. Most of the re the reason why most women, I am speaking for myself and a lot of my clients, you know, the reason why we um we want to control everything. We're we're micromanaging everything. We're micromanaging our man, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's this mothering energy sometimes that 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 comes into it. And mothering energy is actually masculine in that spectrum because we're actually trying to control you know what he eats what he wears who he socializes with what medication he's on like his doctor's appointments his dentist appointments right that's us being in our mother energy and we're trying to micromanage and control finances the budget everything and it's because we're scared like we're we're really scared that if we don't hold all this it's going to fall apart if we don't hold this all together, it's all going to just be a disaster. Because the man's not doing it, not holding well, it like for them. And he's yeah. not. He's not doing it. But also, women often are not letting him do it. Yeah, they don't trust him. Yeah, they don't trust him. And yeah. a big part of this work is taking that leap of faith mm. that if we take our hands off the wheel, right, he will put his hands on the wheel. Yeah. Like he will take, he will, he will steer the ship. He, yeah. a, one of my clients recently said she developed this beautiful, um, she kept, she started to say to her fiance, she said to him, look, you know, um, you're the captain of this ship. You know, you're, you're the, I want, you're the captain of the ship, you know, and he loved it. And it was like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. and she, yeah, she was actually in a strange situation because she was, um, like this, had this hugely success, has this hugely successful career. Mm. And so and she was really trying to polarize the relationship where she was like the main breadwinner and yeah. you know there was all this kind of but it's very possible and he was just his his own sort of self-esteem just went up and up and up because she was like look even though I'm kind of the one who's you know maybe you know has all this kind of success and money and you're still the captain of the ship yeah you know so that just gave him so much confidence and she just wanted yeah. him dearly to take over so yeah. she was then to be able to and the uh, you know the the for feminine, the feminine really wants to be in her creative, flowing, sensual energy. Um, yeah. you know, and funny, and I think she is more creative. Um, yeah, it's a natural, more creative energy, the feminine. Yeah. And the thing is, once we do this work and we become aware, we 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 learn to almost dance between our masculine and our feminine energy. We have to put on our masculine energy sometimes, you know, in our jobs, in our careers. In, in different things that we need to do in life, we have to put it, but it's almost like once we realize we're doing, we're putting on a masculine coat mm -hmm. or, you know, out uniform or something. And then we're going to do, we go do the thing, but it's not our natural essence. And what, when we feel into those energies, like we know when we're in our masculine energy and when we're in our feminine energy mm -hmm. and our feminine energy is where we are healing, where we're thriving, where we're radiant, like this radiance that everybody talks about, like the radiance just comes from being in our natural feminine energy, but it, mm -hmm. it can be really hard mm -hmm. to find it. You know, mm -hmm. we got to, Ain't that funny? Because um, obviously, um, when I'm looking at women, I find it unattractive, truthfully, when I see women out and about, and when you get to know them, when I see them in masculine energy, 
I, my radar doesn't matter how they look and obviously men are more yeah. visual than women um yeah. I literally the the meter goes to unattractive and when I see yeah. a woman just having fun and I, I can see it when a woman's truly in a divine masculine um feminine sorry I'm like wow what's about this girl and then even it becomes to a stage where somehow it bypasses our looks thing which is a factor always but yeah you can women can really when they tap into their divine feminine by the way Ellen should we do another one quickly and carry on a little bit um, sure yes I'd love to okay yeah. so wait let me send you another a link here like okay. 